Hello everyone, this is just a quick uh, commentary video for my 1cc of Dodon Pachi. Uh, I apologize in advance uh, for the poor uh, video quality. So, for the types of, or for these games where I play them in uh, MAME or Retroarch, um, when I record them, they actually come out really squeezed and weird. <laughs> and it just so happens that I have to kind of go back in the in the back end to kind of squish them back into something close to the original aspect ratio. So that's probably why you see a lot of shimmering and other crazy visual artifacts, but hopefully I, I mean at least the main gist of what's happening um, is communicated. Um, so here I'm just playing AL and going through stage one. Um, I haven't really messed around with the ships too much, but I just find that AL kills things really quickly and that's more suited to my playstyle overall. Um, I think a very common other ship uh, choice is CL or CS, uh, which is probably really popular with uh, super players. But um, I think one thing I dislike about the C ships is that their movement speed is a bit slower. So I don't know. I just like playing with a fast ship. Other than that, there's not really much to stage one. Um, I'm going to point this out right now, but uh, this run is pretty scuffed overall. I think there's a lot of mistakes that happen. Uh, one big one that I'll point out. Um, so maybe this is more conducive to a demonstration of how many mistakes you can make throughout a run and still uh, be able to get a one-all in this game at least. I think that going for a one-all is overall not too difficult um, in the grand scheme of things because of how many bombs the game gives you. However, comparatively, going for a two-all or going for score where you can't bomb at all makes this game incredibly difficult. At least one of the most difficult games I've played so far of course, I haven't played some of the more notorious games known for their difficulty, like Dangan Feveron, for example. Uh, but at least in my experience, trying to no miss, no bomb, a lot of even the first loop is pretty challenging, um, and I don't really pull that off at all. So anyway, um, that was just stage one, uh, very simple. Um, not too much uh, to point out there. Stage two is where it starts to get a bit more hectic, I think. Um, there are some high priority enemies that you probably want to take out before they become too much of a problem. Um, and you know, I don't think you need a route necessarily to, sur to get through in survival rise, but just knowing that, for example, those large tanks that come out of those blue bunkers, you want to kill those as soon as possible, and there's two of them that appear um, after you destroy the blue bunker the first time. So there's the second one, kill it before it um, shoots out those really fast bullets. So you can kind of milk that thing on the right there a bit, um, but you know I try to get a little bit of points from it, um, but then I go about the stage as normal. So there's going to be another enemy here in the middle after you blow up kind of these, uh, you know, these white bases. Here's the enemy. So the thing that it does is it shoots very slow uh, bullets that kind of try to trap you by the, um, or try to trap you into a corner so the popcorn can take you out. But this is the more dangerous enemy because it shoots these purple um, slow bullets again. So you, they're kind of like environmental hazards. You really want to dodge the faster things while also navigating through. Um, I was able to get through there, no problem. But, you know, a bomb is coming up soon. So if you're at full bombs, you know, if you're not going for the maximum bomb bonus or anything, it's fine to bomb there just for consistency's sake. There's the bomb. Uh, but otherwise, it's really not too bad um, at this point either. Um, one thing that I will say is what I found with just practicing this game for a little bit is that taking deaths is pretty punishing overall. Um, especially when, you know, for, for reasons like, oh shoot, like I didn't see that bullet and whatever. Um, but if you're able to make it deep into the game with a lot of bombs, I think generally you can... Th then your your margin of error becomes significantly wider where you can make a bunch of stupid mistakes and still be okay. I think part of the reason is because um, you actually get uh, more a larger bomb stock um, you know, with how many extends that you've kind of gone through over time. I think that's a classic thing with Donut Pasha games, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so then you have more bombs just to mess up. and so. Yeah, I'm, my point is just that you can make more mistakes towards the latter half of the game. That was the stage 2 boss. Um, you can see that I used a bomb. Um, one thing that I should also mention is just that there is a pretty in-depth boss tutorial guide for you know newer players or intermediate players uh, done by uh, Mark over at the Electric Underground. So that's a YouTube video that you guys can check out. I used that video to kind of learn his routes for you know being very consistent with the bosses. Um, and in that way, be able to clear the game a bit faster. 
So Sage 3 is actually where the game gets a, a bit more difficult. So the, the thing to note is you want to take out the popcorn enemies uh, as soon as possible. So for example, the stuff on the left here, I stay on the left, killing those popcorn enemies which shoot those like large burning bullets. And then I go for the kill on the big ship, which is much less of a threat. So this guy dies before the second group of purple balls um, can really get to you. So you just want to focus on dodging the first part. Otherwise, it's not too bad. This is kind of a little bit of a break in stage 3 where you get to kind of kill these passenger ships a little bit. And then we'll get to this weird part uh, that I oftentimes bomb. Or not yet. So again, we're going to kill the popcorn on the left and then go to kill the large enemy on the right. Same with the right. Kill the popcorn. Now kill the large enemy on the left. And that's just because the popcorn, again, shoot these really, you know, really annoying sets of bullets that make dodging a bit more difficult. So this is the part where these, like, green... You know, stealth ships come out. So you want to be able to kill them as soon as possible, and then those yellow ships actually give you a screen clear. So at the end of the day, um, if things get too hectic, just sit in front of it and kill it before um, the enemies can kill you. You can see here that it doesn't look too bad, um, but if you don't kill the green, uh, you know, the green stealth enemies fast enough, they can actually really pollute the screen. Uh, so I would recommend just um, practicing this several times, just so that you know. Um, where they appear, so you can try to kill them as fast as possible. Here, you, I'm going to bomb, because it got a little too hectic. Um, there's a strategy you can use where you delay it, uh, the kill on the yellow um, tanker ship in order to get the screen clear in that last part, but uh, I didn't go for it there and used a bomb, which you get plenty of, so it's okay. This section I would also recommend practicing, because it's where you get uh, your uh, free uh, hidden extend of the game. Um, but you can't bomb to destroy, I believe it's those yellow pods. I could be mistaken, but as a rule, I just try not to bomb in this area to get the one up. Um, and I try to break all the parts. It's kind of like a, uh, a blue revolver or that sort of thing, um, where that's the condition, I believe, uh, for getting the hidden one up. So here, I kind of show it off, uh, grab it, and now we're on the stage 3 boss. So I'm doing pretty well so far, uh, but as you'll see, it kind of will all fall apart <laughs> um, in the later stages. So here, uh, starting here. So here I'm going to try to do the first part of this um, consistent boss strat where I sit on top of it and I dodge the blue lasers while sitting on top of it. And then this third time it fires, you go downwards. So what I'm going to try to do is once the uh, caps kind of come off of those those guns on the right and the left, um, which you'll see in just a second, I'm going to bomb it to try and destroy them, which makes the pattern much easier. So here's what I'm going to try to do. I'm just trying to shoot the one on the right and then the left. But as you can see, I don't kill either of them, which is really bad. So then I have to bomb again to kill them. And now you can see the boss pattern is quite um, is quite manageable. You just kind of pay special attention to the blue bullets while macro dodging the reds. Um, but what I was going to say is you can typically kill the guns on the right and left with one bomb easily. And then you get that very easy pattern to finish the boss. But because I was too eager and kind of shifted from the right to the left gun, um, before uh, they exploded, I had to bomb again or risk dying uh, because those guns actually fire very, you know, uh, very dense bullets that you kind of have to wade through their little arrows, which is not fun. So I just figured go for safety here. But unfortunately, that uh, mistake cost me um, having a bomb in this first part of stage four, which um, I think you'll see uh, comes back to bite me. So stage four, the thing to look out for is those little guns inside of the buildings. I think something similar is in Crimson Clover, if I'm not mistaken, but essentially they can, like, maybe not point blank you, but they can pop out very unsuspectedly, like you see there, and, and uh, get you if you're not careful. So you always want to make sure to keep a special eye out for them if you're, like, on top of the buildings. You can see that it starts to get a little bit hectic. I made a very uh, risky dodge there uh, on the pop. -up. And I have no bombs, so I have to kind of no, no miss everything here. Uh, you can see here that I just narrowly um, took a, a bullet there. So I'll point it again right here. When you when you kill that building, it reveals a really dangerous enemy that you want to speed kill. So I didn't have full power there, so it died later than I would have liked, so I had to bomb. You can see here that that mistake of not having that bomb earlier cost me um, you know, a death and an additional bomb here, which is... Uh, they're not great, but you'll you'll see many more mistakes throughout the run. Got the bomb back um, here, though. We'll have to use it soon. 
So the idea behind taking these guys out without uh, bombing is you want to kind of feather your shot or your laser on it and then pan to the left and right to take out the popcorn and then come back to kill it. There it was a bit too slow, so you saw what exactly happened, happened there. But um, those large enemies come out three times, so you kind of want to you kind of want to learn uh, that strategy just because if you use a bomb, you might have to bomb again uh, on the third end. This part is a little hectic. Um, got through it though. Uh, I typically bomb here if I, you know, if I haven't really bombed before. But I was trying to be a little bit conservative. Uh, but I got trapped there. So, yeah, you get actually two bomb carriers in this stage, so you can be a little bit more liberal here than you would otherwise be. So yeah, bomb again. I see that there's a bomb pickup floating around, so I figure why not. Um, still doing okay, uh, but now you'll you'll see where the run really starts to fall apart. So I'm gonna try to do the stage four boss glitch, uh, but you'll see exactly what happens. <laughs> I'm not gonna spoil it for you. So I start by point blanking, and then I'm gonna try to go through this set of blue and red bullets. Oops. <laughs> so at this point, I'm just completely fucked because you know. I have a route to get to do the glitch, um, but you know now I'm just completely thrown off. I'm not going to be able to do it really. Um, so I just narrowly avoid taking the laser there. I'm still trying for it. I, I don't know why. And then, yeah, I just I'm like, oops. And now I blew it up too fast, so I have to fight this thing normally. I'm already down and extend. I died with like two bombs left, so it was just really unfortunate. And now I'm going to use more bombs because I'm really not used to dodging this. Because usually I just uh, glitch it. Um, yeah, so get a little bit far, but I'm like, eh, use that bomb. So, okay, so what does this cost me? That that one mistake on the stage for the boss. I had two bombs and I died, so it cost me an extended two bombs. And then I had to use two bombs on this boss. So I'm down four bombs and an extend going into stage five, which is no bueno. Okay, so stage five is actually really difficult, um, that much more hectic than stage four. Um, and the main reason is just because they send a lot of popcorn that shoot these really aggressive hurting bullets. Um, and so you really want to be cutting back as much as possible. It's kind of like stage 5 and Mushi Futari at the very end before you fight um, the final boss. I forget her name now. Um, and so I'll point out the section that's really bad for this in particular. Um, right now it's still relatively doable just by kind of panning to the left, to the right, and going back to the left right that's really all i'm trying to do it's kind of like going with the motion of the ocean right you're going to go with the ebb and the flow um and the misdirecting these guys let's see okay so we get two power-ups here i believe right and then i think this is where it starts so you see those like kind of disc bulbous enemies and those bullets that they shoot and these green guys it's really yeah it's really crazy i've seen like replays where they no miss this really easily and it really all comes down to positioning on the screen where they come in um so you're able to kill them before they you know shoot their uh waves but yeah I, I wasn't in position and i didn't know where to be so that's why i had to bomb and so the bulbous enemies are back and now they're gonna just continue to onslaught you for a really long time so that's this is where you either bomb like crazy or you like like that for example or you're really good at um, misdirecting them and doing the cutback so i, I try to show off a little bit of that here um, yeah, I was able to cut back maybe four or five times. And then I get trapped again and I have to bomb, uh, which should happen right there. Although I, I think there was a window, uh, but I just wasn't confident. Might have to do it again here. Oh yeah, right here, right here. <laughs> so thankfully that part is now done. Um, so that really aggressive popcorn part. Um, oh wow, can't believe I risked that. Oh, I didn't have any bombs left, so I had to. Um, Still, though, the end of the stage is no joke as well. Um, although I would say it's a little bit easier. So now we have these like enemies, which large enemies who shoot these like purple bullets on the left and the right. Uh, couldn't quite make it through. Um, they come in a pretty giant wave. Um, with AL, it's typically easier uh, this section because you can kill them really quickly with the laser. Um, you know, but. In this situation, it was just kind of dangerous. So actually, here's another mistake. So I bombed too early there, and now I have to bomb again to avoid these large enemies, which shoot these like giant missiles that uh, individually fire red bullets horizontally. Um, so I'm not used to dodging that because usually I fire a bomb 
kind of late, so it blows up those enemies as well. But there I did it too early. So here's the stage 5 boss. I'm just using Mark's uh, strat here to point blank it. Um, which is actually really consistent. And then you go to the top left, and then you kind of wade through the pattern here, and the window opens up. That's actually really consistent, so it, it was really helpful in kind of salvaging this run. This actually isn't my first one all of it, uh, but it's the one I got recorded, so unfortunately this is what we got to work with. And then here you can see I bombed to stay on top of its like carriage, or in this cage area in the safe spot, and now I'm just waiting to the right and the left. So when it gets to the right of the screen, it goes upwards, and when it gets to the left of the screen, it goes downwards a little bit. So you want to be careful uh, not to get, um, you know, not to run into the boss, because the boss does move um, up and down as well as left and right. And the area to sit on it is actually not super large, uh, or it's smaller than you think. So you just want to practice that a couple times if, you know, in an emulator or something. This stage 6, it's really more of the same as far as being super hectic. Um, uh, honestly, I think, like, yeah, I, I don't know how people know Miss no bomb these, the last couple stages. Um, I mean, I, I know how, like, I can watch the replays, but I, I don't still understand what's happening. Like, how, how are they able to do this sort of thing? It's just, it just gets really hectic. You can see I still have three bombs left, so I'm relatively safe uh, on this life if I don't make a serious mistake where I die before I can react. Um, but, you know, we're in... Like, it could definitely have been a better run, as I pointed out before. Thankfully, this part is relatively manageable. You want to kill those uh, wasps or those bees as soon as possible, um, just because they shoot these really large bullets and get a bomb here. Um, no need to try and go for anything risky um, when I still have bombs. And we're still waiting on that last score extent as well, which will definitely help give me six more bombs, which is just insane. Um, right, so here is where things start to get a little bit crazy. Um, I'll point out another type of enemy that's, you know, something that you really want to be wary of and probably routing behind it. Those enemies on the top right and now top left, the purple ones that shoot those green bullets, uh, those guys are crazy. Yeah, those guys are really scary. You can see that I'm trying to dodge them as best as I can, but I have to bomb again. Um, those are probably the, the most dangerous enemies um, that you can fight in this section, so you want to be really careful. Now we have these large tanks. Those guys are generally okay. We got the last score extent. Um, trap myself so I have to bomb. And now I have no bombs left, so I'm going to have to dodge everything. Uh, or die. Uh, this is where it starts to get bad, yep. So I get, yeah, I get point blank there. I tried to do an all around the world thing, but yeah, and there was no saving me from there. I'm going to have to bomb again soon. No, no power, or uh, I'm, yeah, full on power now, so here we go, back to full. It's really hard to commentate, so sorry sorry about that if it's kind of lacking, because I'm, I'm just trying to follow what's happening, and I, I really like this aspect of this game, where I don't think I've played a game that, uh, from Cave, so, or as of yet, that really matches this frenetic pace, uh, that was really demanding on my reaction times, I think. You know, Esperade isn't this dense or this fast. I guess Escaluda is also not as dense and fast, so playing a game like this was really like, wow, like it's really testing <laughs> it's really testing my reaction times to the you know the extent of what I'm capable of. Um, which is really nice and I can see why people really enjoy this game and get really, really good at it. Okay, so the the last boss if you're only going for the first loop. Um you know this pattern is relatively dodgeable um, but at this point I'm like okay I have one extend I have some bombs like I'm just gonna use them before I die to something stupid like rather than go for the window there I just bomb and I'm gonna do the same thing here thankfully I was able to find oh actually I didn't find the window whoops um, sometimes I'm able to find the window there to go to the other side but not this time and I have to bomb again okay so now <laughs> no more bombs try to dodge this as best as I can don't think it's gonna happen though Yep. <laughs> if you stay to the bottom of the screen, it's usually a bit easier, but I was just being kind of silly. And now I have so many bombs that I can just kill the final boss by spamming it. So yeah, this is a really scuffed looking uh, final boss. <laughs> I'm just blasting it with the bomb, but you know, that's all you really need <laughs> to get the one all, I guess. Now, now take this replay and then compare it against... The replay from like a person who has practiced the game and you know is capable of scoring and also 
going for the second loop, and you'll see it be like night and day because you know they probably wouldn't use that many bombs, um, and probably no miss as well uh, this first loop. So that's kind of this is kind of like the skill floor, and that's kind of like the skill ceiling. But it's it's a really cool game, um, and it did take some practice in order to even be able to fart out something like this. So um, in that sense. I can see, again, why this has such a legacy, because it's just, it's insane what people are capable of in this game, and watching some of the uh, super players from, you know, both Japan and also the West. Um, so yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if I'll ever even seriously attempt going for a 2-all. I actually kind of doubt it. Um, but this is definitely a game that I'd like to get more consistent at and squeeze out a, a less scuffed run. Um, so... Yeah, one that at least gets the stage 4 boss glitch, because that was really embarrassing. Um, anyway, yeah, that was really it for, um, you know, this commentated clear. Really appreciate um, all the support from everyone, and Presented we'll see you next time. Presented by Cave. <laughs>